Hey, how's it going today? It's Kylie from Pain Wing. In today's video, I'm going to be showing some of my favorite watercolor supplies. I understand that everyone has their different preferences, or maybe is on a different budget or has a different skill level, so keep that in mind while you watch. These are just the supplies I personally use in my practice. I'm going to begin by showing my brushes. Most of the brushes I use are by the brand Princeton. This one here is a Princeton number no. 8 quill brush in their Neptune series. I often use this brush when I'm creating larger paintings. A couple other brushes I really like out of the Neptune series are these oval wash brushes. I use these two a lot for mark making. The most common brushes that I use are round brushes. I have the Neptune brushes in a number 16, a number 12, a number 10, a number 8, and a number 6. And then lastly, a number 4. These are really great brushes, especially if you're just beginning with watercolors. They are made out of synthetic materials and are pretty affordable as well. Next, I'll be moving on to the Aqua Elite series. This here is a number 12 Princeton brush. As you can tell, it's a little old looking. But here's comparison to the Aqua Elite series. It's a little bit more pointed and a little bit more stiff. And here are a lot of the small brushes I use by Princeton. I use these brushes a lot for fine details in my paintings. These brushes don't always last as long, so I do replace them quite often, but luckily they're not as expensive. And then this brush here is a dagger brush by Princeton. To be honest, I never use this brush, but I thought I'd show it anyways. And then this guy here is a one and a half inch Mottler brush. I use this one quite often while creating washes on my large pieces. And then lately I've been purchasing these silver black velvet brushes. These guys here are also round brushes. They are a little bit more expensive than the Princeton brushes, so I don't have all of them quite yet. And again, here's a comparison to the other number 12 round brushes by Princeton. As you can tell, it does have a finer tip than the Neptune series Princeton brush. And lastly, here's an oval wash brush by Silver Black Velvet. I've only had this brush for a week, so I haven't been able to test it out yet. And here's a comparison between the Princeton brushes and the Silver Black Velvet. I like using both brands of brushes. The Silver Black Velvet have more of a pointed tip, where the Princeton brushes have more of a rounded tip. As you can see here, the mark making looks a little different and I prefer the Princeton brush for mark making. I'm going to purposely splatter and drop my paintbrush on this pad to show you how I can clean up these messes. Another useful art supplies that I use, so it's not actually art supplies, is a Mr. Flea Magic Eraser. First I'm going to dab most of the paint off with the paper towel, and then I'll use a damped Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and clean off the rest. Thank you. 
The next supplies I'll be showing are my paints. Most of the paints that I currently use are by the brand Daniel Smith, but I also have some by Winsor Newton and the brand Van Gogh. My favorite paint colors to use are reddish brown colors, such as these here. I also love using ochre colors, especially yellow ochre. And here are a few of my favorite brown colors, sepia and raw umber. I also often use burnt umber but I ran out. And my most used color overall is Payne's Gray. As you can see, I have a few empty tubes here. And then I recently bought Jane's Gray, which is supposed to be pretty similar. And here are a few of the greens that I have. I don't often use green in my work. And here are a few different greenish blues that I have. I don't use these colors that often except for the Mayan Genuine. And here are a few blues that I use a lot. And here's some reds. And then this here is the main yellow that I use. And then here's indigo which I use a lot, but I don't really use these purple colors all that much in my paintings. But they are really pretty. And then this rose color by Winsor Newton I use quite often. It's really great for flesh tones and pinks on animals such as ears and noses. I know not everyone can afford professional grade watercolor paints, but there are some kits that are pretty affordable and great quality. This one here is a student grade kit by Winsor Newton. It comes with a nice variety of colors, and if you don't have every color you can always mix them. Another great watercolor kit for beginners is this one by Van Gogh. This was actually the watercolor kit that I used when I started painting with watercolors. I even still use some of the colors today. Next I'll be showing which paper I use. For my paintings, I most often use Arches Watercolor Block Paper. This paper is 100% cotton, 140 pounds, and comes with 20 sheets of paper. The sheets of paper come stacked together and are attached on the sides with glue. This helps so your paintings don't warp and so you don't have to stretch your paper before painting. When you first get the paper, it comes with this black sheet on top that you must remove. This here is the cold press paper and is what I use the most often. The Arches blocks come in three different types of paper, cold press, hot press, and rough. The cold press is a good middle ground between the hot and rough paper. Here's an example of something I've painted on cold press. As you can tell, it has a slight texture to it. And then here's Arches Hot Press Paper. This paper is going to be really smooth and doesn't have much tooth to it at all. Here's an example of something I paint on the hot press paper. And here's a comparison of the two. Another essential supply for me are pencils. 
which may seem pretty obvious, but there's a particular type of pencils that I prefer to use, which are hard pencils. Like the name suggests, hard pencils create hard lines that are also lighter. It is important while painting with watercolors to have light lines so your paint covers them. Or if you make a mistake, you can easily erase the line. Here I am testing out different grades of hard pencils. The higher the number, the harder the pencil is. Here you can see the difference between the grades. Another one of my favorite supplies are white erasers. I try to buy multiples of these because I always seem to lose them. Now I'm going to erase the lines I just created to see how they erase. Here you can see which pencil marks still remain after erasing. How soft or how hard you draw will also make a difference. I try to draw as light as possible when preparing for my watercolor paintings. Here's what I use for my watercolor palette. These are just ceramic plates that I bought in the store. As you can tell, I'm quite messy with my watercolors. Some people prefer their paints more organized, but I don't really seem to mind. Again, it all comes down to personal preference. Here's another option I've used in the past. I didn't like these as much though. Mainly because I prefer a flat surface. I have also just used the containers that come with these kits. For my water, I often just use mason jars. I sometimes use these closed lid containers as well. You can also mix some colors in these too. Another type of art supplies that I use are these Micron pens. I mainly use these if I do line and wash paintings, which I haven't done in a while. But they can be used to create fine details such as whiskers. I also sometimes use gel pens and white ink in my paintings. This white ink here comes with a little brush tip, but you can also use a separate brush. The last supply that I use quite often is salt. Salt helps create an interesting texture and watercolor, which I can demonstrate later. This here is just plain table salt. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. If you'd like, I can create a more in-depth video on each of these supplies. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite art supply is.